Hey, this is Dr. Fass here, and in this video I will show you this touchscreen Wi-Fi thermostat that I'll be installing in my home. And this one is made by First Alert. It's called the One Link, and the model number on this is Therm-500 or T-H-E-R-M-500. And as you can see, uh, there's an app you can install on your mobile phone to control the thermostat remotely. And I picked this up at Costco. Uh, regular price is $200. They had a um, $40 rebate, so it was $160. So let me show you the back of this package. Here's a look at the features available on the app and also the thermostat. On the app, you can change the temperature, view the name and location of the thermostat, view the current weather and forecast, view and change the equipment mode, heat, cool, auto changeover or off, view the equipment status, set home or away, turn the thermostat's time period schedule on or off, send text messages directly to the thermostat screen, see cooling and heating run times for today, this week and last week. On a thermostat you can customize the screensaver and wallpaper up to four heat and two cool stages, gas, electric or heat pump control, programmable or non-programmable options, adjustable timers and dead bands, set point limiting, connect to remote sensor. The remote sensor is a temperature sensor that is optional, you have to pay extra for that. Choice of English and Spanish or French. Drop down current weather and forecast screen. Let's open this up. Here are all the parts from this unit. Here's the thermostat. The back plate is removable. You have the mounting screws and the installation guide. Here's my old uh, thermostat. Remove the front panel here. So on mine, just snaps off. With the front cover off, you have access to this panel where the wires are connected to. And on this thermostat, the circuit board is marked with the corresponding uh, type of connection. So up here, for example, on the top right, it's marked RH. Uh, this one here is B, not connected. O is not connected. And then over here is Y, G. And this one is jumpering the power from here over to here. The white wire up top is connected to the W. So if you count the number of wires coming through the wall connecting to the thermostat, this is a four wire system. I'm in my attic right now and normally when you do this installation you don't need to come up uh, to the attic or wherever your furnace uh, unit is. But I want to take one extra step to show you. I've taken the cover off my furnace and behind it there's a control board. And over here you see this bundle of wire right here and these are the four wires I am going to be connecting to my thermostat so this bundle of wires run all the way downstairs to my main floor and I have my green red yellow and white all connected here on the control board and over here on the left side of the barrier strip where all the wires are connected is marked COM for common W Y R and G. So you know which wires go where. The power that goes to the control board is connected to the R. In my case is the red wire here on the R and the COM, the common. And it's 24 volt AC system. Now when I remove the front metal cover here there is a switch Whenever the front panel is removed, this switch will open up and it will stop the power from going to the control board. So everything shuts off. But I want to show you guys the 24 volt AC power source. And what I'll do is I have a multimeter set to AC voltage. I'm going to probe the R terminal and the COM terminal. Here you see 26.4 volt AC. 
is basically a 24 volt AC system. Let go of that switch and there's no voltage. The first thing you want to do is to turn the breaker off for the furnace and here if you look at the label here the top two on the right side is furnace that corresponds to these two breakers go ahead and turn these off so now there's no power and if you want to double check to make sure there's no power all you have to do is try to turn on the fan the manual fan on switch here and that should turn on the fan in the house if you don't hear anything then we know that there's no power going to the furnace on page six of the installation guide there's a table here that tells you from your old thermostat the corresponding connection how it'll connect over to the new one and below that there is a wiring label this is actually a sticker sheet you can peel off these labels and you want to place each of these corresponding marking on the existing wire because what we'll be doing is removing all these wires and then taking out the old thermostat another thing you can do is if you want to make sure that you don't mess up or make any mistakes with the label you can take a picture of this so you have a record of it I've gone ahead and removed the batteries that power the old thermostat and then the first one I'm going to remove is this yellow wire that's on the Y terminal here So once you have that removed from the terminal, what you want to do is mark it with a label. So this one's labeled now. And just continue on with the rest of the wire. With the wires removed and everything's labeled, go ahead and remove the old thermostat. Now one thing you want to really pay attention is read the manual fully before you begin all the work because like for my system, which is a four wire system, over here on page nine you'll see that for a four wire 24 volt AC power system it requires a C wire to operate because the 24 volt AC is actually going to be used to power the new thermostat but as you noticed earlier I have a W wire RH wire a G wire and a Y wire there's no C wire and what they recommend is that you can actually use one of the unused wire that you see right here I have a blue and a brown that's not used this wire will run all the way to the furnace unit and then I need to connect this one of this wire to the common terminal on a new thermostat on the other end of this wire that goes to the furnace is to connect that same wire to the common terminal on the circuit board there down here in this part of the paragraph it does tell you that if you don't happen to have any extra wire here you can use your G or the F wire as a common but you definitely want to pay attention and read this fully if you're going to be doing this install and you don't have the extra wire for the common wire to power up the new thermostat now we're ready to mount the back plate of the new thermostat onto the wall and luckily for me these existing holes actually match up to the two holes that this new one uses and also when the builder built this house this wall is all painted. Uh, I have a coworker who installed a nest and the original one was a big square. The nest, as you know, is a round little circle. So when he took out the old one, this whole area wasn't painted and the nest was smaller. So he ended up having to find the paint to match it and then paint the area. So looking at the back plate here, you'll see that there's a sticker here. This is a thermal insulation barrier and it comes with two holes. So depending if you want to split the wires, on one side to the other. Uh, in my case, I'm going to just basically put all these together as one bundle and feed this through, including my extra common wire that I'll be connecting. Now 
Now that we're ready to wire everything to the new thermostat, again refer to the table that's in the manual. On the left side is your old wiring and how it translates to the new wiring on the new thermostat. So we just follow and match up the wire to wire from left to right. Right now all my wires, including the common wire, is connected now. And we'll go to the furnace and also connect the common wire. So here's a bundle of wire with the extra wire. And this is the brown wire I'll be using for common. And I'll be connecting this to the common terminal on the circuit board here. Now put the cover back on. Before you install the front face plate onto this back plate, you need to pay attention to the dip switch on the circuit board, and that's referred to on page 10 here. So the first switch at the very top is to select whether it's gas electric or heat pump. The second switch or the middle switch is going to be for heat pump setting. The third switch here is to control the fan function. So if you select the gas, it will let the HVAC control the fan function. And if you select the electric, then the fan will come on when the heating is energized. When you're installing the front face plate, keep in mind that these pins here gets inserted into this barrier strip. So be careful that you don't damage that. Now I'll go and uh, turn the breaker back on to power this thermostat up. I've just turned on the power and the system is turning on. Mine's right here. So all you have to do is enter your password. One thing I noticed about the screen is that it's not capacitive. So even a pen like this will work. Touch to close. This screen tells you that this device is not in a Skyport account. So I'll get on my PC right now and set up an account. And then we'll continue on after that. As part of the setup process of the account, uh, it does ask for a device code specific to this thermostat. And it tells you to go to the menu, Skyport, Skyport accounts. From here you select the browser button here and you'll get a six digit device number that you need to add to your account. Here is the first alert homepage and you'll see right here there's my location. We'll click on that. So for my installation I installed two of these and I've named it first floor and second floor. And if you want to add more of these uh, thermostat click on the add location. This screen will come up. You just have to enter the location name so let's say there was a third floor, I'll put down third floor. And then put in your time zone, country, address, the zip code, and then do a save change. So here's a dashboard for my second thermostat. Over here there's a thermostat tab here, click on that. And then you can go ahead and click on this green button, add thermostat. And again, enter the device code. After you enter the device code, click on Join Device. Now it tells you that the device is added. Click on Done. One thing I want to point out is that if you want to make any changes on this page, let's say I want to make this warmer, there's a menu that comes up. It asks you to uh, write this change. And if you click on Submit, that's when the setting will be sent to the thermostat. But until you click on a Submit, it will not send that setting over to the thermostat. Here's a quick look at how to use this. It's quite simple. 
So on the left side here is the temperature that's currently being measured, the ambient temperature of the room. And then you have the warmer and cooler button. So if you want to make it warmer, press the up button, make it cooler, and press the down button. Now the other thing is that if you're going out of town, you can click on this away button. And by pressing the away button, that will tell you that it's unoccupied and it will automatically set this to cool to 85 and heat up to 55 during the winter. On the left side you see this fan icon. If you press on that, you can turn on the fan for fan mode or you have it auto. On the top here, you press anywhere on the top bar, it will give you the forecast for the weather. If you press the mode button here, and this menu comes up whether you want it to stop or run on the schedule, pre-programmed schedule. Right now is on the schedule. Press anywhere on the screen and it'll go back to the main screen. Here is the menu button. Press the menu button and it'll give you all the options including the schedule. So you can go into schedule and view my schedule or edit my schedule. So I selected the edit my schedule and you select all. Select all of them and then you can do next and here you can actually edit the morning schedule, day, evening, and night schedule. Let me show you how the mobile app work. And here I have my Android phone and I downloaded the One Link app. It's free and installed it. And if you have more than one floor, like I do, you'll see that over here it says first floor. If you swipe it, now it shows you the second floor. We'll go back to the first floor because that's where I am right now. And if you want to control or make changes to this remotely, press on here, the thermostat, and then it will give you a display very similar to what you see here. And if you want to change it to warmer or cooler, just press on one of these. So let's say I want to make it cooler. So 77, let's go ahead and change this to 75. So it cools down to 75 degrees. And then you have to press a send green button right here to send this configuration over to here. Now, I don't know if you caught it, but now this is set to cool to 75 degrees. On the lower right hand corner, you can select the configure button and you can set the home and away mode and also look at the schedule and also the fan control. So this was the installation of the first alert one link Therm-500 thermostat. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and if you like the video, please subscribe. Thank you.